there, I'm Sasha and I've got some great stuff lined up for you and it's related to nature and the world around us. Let's do some grammar. Let's do some adjectives. Adjectives add colour and meaning to what we say and write. I have a picture for you. That's a teenager. The word teenager is a noun. Okay, I want you to look at the picture carefully and think of words that can tell us a little more about this teenager. Ah! Uh, please don't all shout at once. Great. Let's see what we have. Busy. Hmm. I don't think he looks busy at all. Thin. Yes, that would be a good description. Happy. Well, I don't think so. Sad. I'll have to agree with this one. Brave. Hmm. Sorry, but I'll have to disagree with this one. Hungry. 100% correct. So, from the picture, and with your help of course, we can safely say that a teenager is thin, sad, and hungry. And what do we call words like these? That's right, adjectives. An adjective is a word that gives us extra information about people, like the boy that we just met. Animals, places, and things. Here's something that you need to remember. An adjective is usually placed before the noun that it is describing. Let's take a look at a visual of how this works. Here are two words, dragon and friendly. Dragon is a noun and friendly is an adjective. Where should we put the word friendly? Here? No! Here? Yes! Excellent! We place the adjective before the noun that it is describing. And here are a few more examples just for you. Let's watch a video of two children using adjectives in their conversations. So, how was your visit to the zoo yesterday, Melanie? Awesome! I saw so many wild animals there. I saw a huge elephant with a very long trunk. Wow! Do you see any tigers? Yes! I saw a ferocious tiger. I thought it was going to eat me for lunch. What about um, team animals? Were there any at the zoo? Oh yes, you've got to visit the petting zoo. There are kindly rabbits, fluffy sheep, and ponies. They're simply adorable. Oh, hold on, Pausan. I've got photos to show you. Here, let me show you. Uh, where did he go? Ah, boys. <laughs> Poor Falzan. I guess he had to see the animals for himself. Anyway, did you spot the adjectives that Melanie used to describe the animals? Okay, I will show you the pictures of the animals that Melanie saw at the zoo and you will have to give me the adjectives that she mentioned. If your adjectives correspond with mine, give yourself a pat on the back. Ready? Here goes. Elephant. Huge. A huge elephant. Did you get it right? 
Good. Melanie also described its trunk. The adjective she used is long. A long trunk. I'm sure you got that right too. Tiger. Yes, a ferocious tiger. Melanie also mentioned a few animals from the petting zoo. Here's one of them. Rabbit. Melanie described it as a cuddly rabbit. I'm sure you remembered that adjective easily. There you are, a few adjectives that you can use to describe animals. So, from now on, I hope you'll use more adjectives when you speak and write, okay? Collective nouns are fun words. They help us create pictures in our minds when we think of groups of people, animals, places or things. Oh look, it's a tree! Ah, even more trees! Well, I can just call them trees, can't I? That would be just fine. But I know that I can make the trees happier if I gave them a collective name. Hmm, let me see. I know, I'll use the collective noun clump. That's right, a clump of trees. Yeah, that sounds better. Ah, it's a bird. Wow, now there are so many of them. Well, I can just call them birds because that's what they are. Or I can add a collective noun to add an extra zing to it. Let me see. Okay, got it. I'm going to use the word flock. So they are now officially a flock of birds. You can also use other collective nouns with birds. You can also call them a flight of birds. Gosh, what an interesting novel. It's called How I Met Myself and was written by David A. Hill in 2006. Let's go through this novel together. I'll use pictures to help you understand this strange tale, okay? This story revolves around an Englishman called John Taylor who lives and works in the 13th district of Budapest, Hungary. He is a computer programmer employed by a multinational company in Vaci Ucha and lives with his wife, Andrea, and his daughter, Katie, in Holland Ucha. One cold winter evening, on the 18th of January, a man runs into John and knocks him off his feet. The man turns and apologizes to John. John is absolutely shocked because the man looks exactly like him. The man runs off hastily. John tries to follow him but could not find the man's footprints in the snow. John goes crazy after that encounter. He can't sleep because of reoccurring nightmares that last for two years. He can't concentrate on his work and starts to lose his wife's trust. John knows that the cause of his misery began when he met the man who was the image of himself. So, he comes up with a plan to solve the mystery and get back his peace of mind. He stalks the area outside number 7, Felka Ucha, for a week. This is where he first met his double. He hopes to run into the man again. He walks around the Felka Ucha area and makes inquiries as to whether anyone living there looks like him. He also does an extensive search of all newspapers at the Budapest City Library to find out the significance of the 18th of January, the day he met, well, himself. John is shocked when he discovers that supernatural beings called doppelgangers exist in this world. A doppelganger is a ghostly double of a living person 
will appear in order to give a warning that something bad is going to happen. His investigations reveal even more strange details. He learns that a woman named Mrs. Sabo and her young daughter were killed on the 18th of January when a Russian bomb hit a building on a street called Gerge Ucha and that there are many similarities between the Sabo family and his. Firstly, he shares the same name as Mrs. Sabo's husband whose name is Janos Sabo the Hungarian equivalent for John Taylor. Secondly, the woman and her daughter who were killed share the same name as his wife and daughter. Thirdly, John and Janos share the same birthday, the 23rd of October. Lastly, the cellar in Gerge Ucha, where Andrea and Katie Sabo were killed is now Zoltz Cafe that John's doppelganger ran into after knocking him over in the snow. It is also the place where John's wife had worked some time ago. Phew, that's weird. So how does the story end? Well, it's the 18th of January again and it's a normal working day for John. However, when he gets home that evening, he discovers that Andrea is working after Zolt's cafe and she has taken Katie along. John turns cold with fear. He rushes to the cafe, only to hear a thunderous explosion in Gerge Ucha. Zolt's cafe had been destroyed in the blast. John fears the worst. He thinks Andrea and Katie are dead. John walks home in tears. He is shocked when he suddenly meets his doppelganger along the way. The doppelganger points to the end of the street. There, to his relief, he sees Andrea and Katie. The doppelganger had saved John's wife and daughter by preventing them from entering Zolt's cafe and forcing them to go home. Oh, what a beautiful conclusion to the story. Okay. Time for homework. I am going to give you a question based on this novel and I want you to try your very best to answer it. Here it comes. Based on a novel, write about an interesting event or incident that happened. Your response should be not less than 50 words and it has to be in continuous writing. Not in note form, okay? Best of luck! I hope you enjoyed the time that we spent together and learned a little more about the English language. Take care and have a great day!